Hi, I'm Kate, and today I'm watching The Haunting of Hill House, episode 8. In the last episode, we were following Hugh, the father, and he's someone who likes to think of himself as a fixer. We see in the past timeline that he and Olivia, his wife, the children's mother, are house flippers. That is how they ended up at Hill House, and Hill House seems to have endless problems for him to fix. In the present storyline, it is the day of Nell's funeral, and after all of this time, after everything we see happening, Hugh is still trying to help his children and fix their problems. So in the past timeline, it is the a day or two after that big storm we had seen, and there is a lot of water damage that they're trying to assess. They say that it is running through the house like veins. The more and more they describe this house and what houses are just makes Hill House feel even more like a living thing. As Hugh is trying to fix this water damage with the help of Stephen, who always wants to be there helping his dad, and we see Olivia trying to put together a master blueprint to help him fix the water damage and where it may be. But when Olivia presents Hugh with this master blueprint, it has left him confused and it seems a little upset. Mr. Dudley sees the blueprint as well and begins to give Hugh a bit of his Mr. Dudley lore his experiences in the house, his family's experiences, and the boundaries that they had to set for themselves in order to keep sanity. It turns out that Liv had just traced the outline of their future forever home that she's been planning all over the blueprint of Hill House. Before Hugh can even address the issue with her, he wakes up in the middle of the night with her on top of him holding a screwdriver to his neck. He definitely seems to be taking Mr. Dudley's warning a bit more seriously. He shows her the blueprint and they decide that she should leave the house for a few days to get her head back on straight. She says it's her migraines and she's going to go stay with her sister. While also dealing with Olivia, Hugh is hearing this scratching noise behind the wall in this basement where he's trying to fix his water damage. And finally, he breaks through the wall, expecting rats, and finds a skeleton. We find out that it is a member of the Hill family that went missing years and years ago, and no trace of him was ever found, though he bricked himself in. But there are scratch marks, meaning he may have had some second thoughts. The police officer that is delivering this news and comes and collects the skeleton from Hill House ends up being the same officer who arrests and interrogates Hugh after the night of the incident. We still don't really know what this incident is. We saw Olivia and Abigail and Luke and Nellie headed to the uh, Red Room a few episodes ago. And then at the end of this episode, we see Hugh running towards the Red Room. The cop is interrogating him, asking, you know, what happened? You were saying some crazy stuff about the house. You were saying that the house killed her. You waited three hours to call us after you found her. What happened in those three hours? What is going on? Hugh says, yeah, I've said a lot of crazy things tonight. I am mourning. I found my wife dead. Like, what do you want from me? And... It seems as though he's trying to figure out exactly what to tell the cops because it is true, most likely, that he did not harm Olivia or mean to. However, there's three hours unaccounted for where he didn't call the police. What happened in those three hours? There's just a lot of questions that the cops and we have. I don't believe that Hugh hurt Olivia. However, Olivia comes up in the current timeline. Hugh is still trying to help and fix his children's problems. He's trying to get to the bottom of what happened between Shirley and her husband and also Theo because she's included in that. Theo opens up to Hugh for the most part, doesn't tell him exactly everything that's going on, which means we don't know everything that exactly went on with her and Shirley's husband, Kevin, but she apologizes to her dad and says that she should have made more of an effort as well and met him halfway. And it seems as though their relationship is mending, heading in the right direction. He was able to fix it a little bit. 
when they're taking a handful of dirt and throwing it on Nell's casket, Luke is by himself and silently apologizes to Nell when he looks up and sees her ghost and she yells at him, don't. And then from Nell's grave comes Olivia, possibly Olivia, and she grabs onto Luke trying to pull him in with her, telling him to come home. No one else sees what happens, but they do see Luke very upset. Steve comes over, is trying to talk him down, and is telling him, like, I see things too. I see mom's, I've been seeing mom's ghost too. You're not really seeing it, and I'm not really seeing it. We're both seeing it, but we're not really seeing it. And you have to get your act together. And you can kind of tell that the way he's desperately talking to Luke is almost him, his like inner monologue to himself, I'm sure, because he probably thinks that he's going crazy and is trying to keep it together and seeing Luke s say the same things, it's just like, no, 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 we're not crazy. It seems like Steve believes that this is in their genetics, it's in their genes, and they're just fighting a losing battle. Back at Shirley's house funeral combo, they discover that Luke has been missing, Theo's car is gone, and Shirley's credit cards are no longer in her purse. They all assume that Luke is out and about to relapse. While they're getting their things together to go and search for him, they hear something, they find some dirt on the floor leading into Shirley's office. Theo and Hugh follow it in, and they find Shirley's forever home model destroyed and on the floor. As Theo's picking it up, there's movement behind the desk, and out comes Olivia's ghost. She's reaching for Theo. Theo is screaming and searching for Hugh to help her. Of course, Shirley comes in after the entity is gone and has no idea what's going on. Now, this whole time in the present timeline, I haven't even talked about how Olivia is always at Hugh's side. Hugh tells Luke that he views it as a coping mechanism. It helps him as a widower to believe that she is right beside him. He always says that Olivia was better at fixing things with the children and dealing with the children. So now that he's alone and trying to fix the children's problems, he believes that Olivia is by his side and is guiding him. And it's funny because we see him sometimes take her advice and sometimes not take her advice. But I really do believe that everything she's saying to him, he, he's pretty probably spot on with what the real Olivia would say. So this Olivia entity ghost, I don't believe it's really her because at one in one episode, Luke had said, one of the kids had said, that's not your mom. Hugh said, that's not your mom in the very first episode when they were leaving the house on the night of the incident. So who is it? And this ghost entity also has damage to its face, which resembles again, I didn't talk about it, in the past timeline, when Steve and Hugh are trying to fix the water damage in the basement, he is looking at a shadow on the wall and Hugh reaches in to try and fix one of the fans and it turns on and slices his knuckles open. And the cut on his knuckles very much resembled the cuts on the Olivia entity's face. So my main concerns going into this episode, where is Luke? I don't believe he's relapsing. I think that Nell's message may have been jumbled up because when Luke first saw her in episode, I believe, three or four, four, she's, he woke up in the middle of the night to her saying, go, and he took that as go find his friend. And then at the funeral, she's saying, don't. So I think she's trying to say don't go as in don't go to the house, but it didn't come out in the way it was supposed to. And I believe Luke is now on his way to the house to figure out what's going on. As this is episode eight, I don't think we're going to get the red room reveal yet. I don't think that's going to happen. Hopefully we'll get a little bit more information, though I'm not sure what we'll cover in the past timeline because in, in the last episode, Olivia said she was going to stay at her sister's house. And so this is, this must be the day. What else are we going to see? I don't know. I'm excited. So let's start the episode. Uh, 
I have the app monitoring ovulation. Steve doesn't look as excited. Is that a problem? Possibly, possibly not. What's that? Steve's in an uncomfortable situation and he's being haunted by something. Uh, will insurance help with that? Most companies won't cover IVF. Almost looks like Shirley. Looks a lot like oh Shirley. Penny. No, looks like the mom. Steve? So maybe because he was seeing Steve. the ghost, this is why he was having Steve. second thoughts about having children, because he thought that he was following in their mom and Nell's footsteps. No. Oh, Forever House. He hasn't used the credit card yet. They're going to send me an alert when he does. We can get a location from that. I think he's headed to the house. He didn't have to break the house. Oh, I don't think he did. Me neither. I'm worried about a lot more than that. What do you mean? Suicides can cluster in families. If they lose a twin, the odds go up. He this is very not true. Be planning to come home. Oh, I think he was planning to go home. We we'll go look for him. It's a waste of gas. He could be anywhere. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go with you. What are you gonna do? Drive in circles? Hope he's standing on some corner? Maybe. Yeah. Sometimes it just feels really better to do something. We saw. I'm actually happy that Theo wants to like start talking. But also the last two to fall are Steve and Shirley, who help. seem to be the ones that are going to be the hardest to get. They're seeing I things and refuse to Look, but I, I know believe you do, what they're seeing. But I'm going to start using some really strong chemicals down here, and it just isn't safe. I've already hired all the help I can afford just to get everything else finished by the end of summer. Oh. I could use your help with something. Your mom's gonna go to your Aunt Janet's in a few days. Oh, in a few days, okay. How come? Well, you know, she's been cooped up in this house all summer. Anyway, I know it's not the most exciting thing, but I could really use your help watching your brother and your sisters while she's away. Yeah. Yeah, I got you. Good okay. big brother. And we literally, we just saw Hugh telling Steve that he wants to help and find Luke. And now we're seeing in the past how Steve always used to ask Hugh if he could help. Why does that guy look so old-timey? What do you mean, sweetheart? Of course you're safe with me. Oh. Mom! <gasps> you okay? Where are the twins? Downstairs. So who is she talking to? Of course. Are you sure? I'm you're fine, there? sweetie. I'm fine. I think she should have left for Janet's a little bit sooner. Every hospital in Boston at the plan. We gotta do something. Yeah, we do. Yes, exactly. You guys are on the same page. We gotta do something. What's going on with you and Lee? What do you mean? How's your marriage? We, we might be in the car for a while, and so I thought to myself, you know what? I'm gonna ask my son about his life. What's wrong with it doesn't that? Doesn't work that way, Dad. Your mom and I were married 15 years. It wasn't very long. Together, five before that. She used to say she was the kite and I was the line. That's cute. And she'd say that without me, she'd become a tethered and she would float away up into the... And then without her, I would just, you know, crash, just drop right down to the ground. That's why he still imagines her with him. Briefly, we separated. You were one year old. Two weeks. I don't even know how we got there. Just you know we fought. I don't know what we fought about. But <sighs> I don't know what the hell, you stupid asshole. What are you, insane? She handed you to me. I had you in one arm and her in the other, and that was it. I do think Steve needed to hear that, though. Yeah, I mean, we still fought sometimes. It's but never it's, too late to turn uh, things around. We fought with love. She she taught me that. You're on the same team, even when you're in the middle of the fight. You know, look, we weren't perfect, but we were always kind. I don't think he's ever had his parents humanized like this for himself, because he saw them as his heroes and then his enemies. Or so enemy whatever you with need the father. to fix between you and Lee, I really, I really hope you do. Also, I think that helped Hugh to finally be she able to talk us. to one of his children about on, their mother and how much he loved her. Oh, it's Halloween, so we're definitely seeing some more ghosts. Can we talk when I get back? How? You'll be back at the hotel. Okay. Turn off the porch light. I can't handle trick-or-treaters tonight. I'm just waiting for something to pop out. I don't know. I feel like Theo and the... And Hugh should have said something to her because now Shirley's just in that room all by herself. Sorry, no candy here. Goddamn lights off. No one's gonna be there. Mm. We're not gonna 
gonna find him like this. You didn't have to come. Yeah, I did. No, you really did. Yeah, I did, Steve. I can't lose anyone else. You know, and one day when you have children, you'll understand. That. I'm never having children. That's a shame. Two kids are the best thing in my life. <laughs> you mean and Janet's life? Ooh. Everything I did, I, I did, did to, to protect, protect you. us. I know. Yeah. yeah, just like you protected mom. Tell I us. Saw the police reports. Her skull cracked like a melon. No, she hit the when desk. You just, uh... There was blood all over the library carpet. And a contusion on the back of her head from being shoved into a wall. Well, we saw Theo see that. Unmedicated, untreated, and abandoned. No, it wasn't like that. She was sick in her mind, and the one person, the one person that was supposed to take care of her didn't do a goddamn thing to get her help. So is Steve also afraid he's not going to be able to help Lee, possibly? I miss her. I miss my mom. Uh -oh. I miss her too. It's certainly beautiful. Where did you find it? The what room? Upstairs. You know, I think a little paint, maybe fix those drawers, and she might really love it. I'm sure she will. Oh, is he going to fix it up for his mom? This must have been Poppy's. Poppy. Poppy? She was William's wife. She was insane. William's parents sent him to an institution when he was a kid. They called it private school. They met in the mental institution. They fell in love in an asylum. Do you know her? Oh, Sounds yes. like it. She was just as crazy, just older. So it's like Olivia, because Olivia almost seems like a medium. So is she just experiencing? If you really want one of the crazies that lived mom, in this house, I'd suggest you don't work on it in your room. Ooh, is that all mold? Oh, buddy, we can't just paint over mold. Just take the fucking candy and go. Someone's gonna look through the window. Unless... Lock the door. Make sure you lock the door. Who is this? I was just uh, coming to apologize. Wait. Not now. I can explain. I doubt that. Making out with my husband. No, no. There was no actual. He pushed me away. Is this supposed to make this better? It wasn't even him. Did she touch something and like have a moment and wasn't like there? You are impossible. Do you know that? Oh, I'm sorry. Have I offended you? You ice people out. You always have. I ice people out? <laughs> so I chose to live there to help try and keep you warm. You fucking suck at apology. I am a fucking doctor. You're a fucking slut. And all of us, all of us are just always helping you keep up this idea in your head that you're perfect sure life. Out! No! You do not just get to shove me out of your life. Shirley. Did you just punch me in the boot? <laughs> yeah. Let's laugh about it. Yeah. And of course, my heater starts knocking at the same time. Let's turn some lights on. This is like when they were in the bedroom that night and Hugh said it was the pipes. Who is it? Cheryl? What's up? I got a hit. Where is he? A card at a gas station. 202, just east of Amherst. Going to the house. Um, can you text me the address? You guys are gonna stay there, we're gonna go to Amherst. If he's stopping in Amherst, he's heading to Charlie, the house. listen to me, you're gonna stay put. You hear me? Tell them what happened. Tell them what just happened. Come on, Shirley. Some fucking kids playing a prank is what happened. You know it wasn't. Let's go. Come on, Thea, let's go. Goddamn house. So we, this episode, we just, we have to break down the walls with Shirley and Steve. Last time I saw Mom, the look in her eye, I've seen that look in Nell over the years. And Luke, from the start, St our family has a disease that's never been treated because it was easier to listen to your crazy stories about an evil house. So you think you saw it in the mirror, that's why you think you'll never have kids. Honestly, I don't blame I mean, Steve sure. for believing that. We know it's a haunted house, but... Oh, vasectomy. Right out of college. Oh, they were doing IVF and he didn't even tell Lee. All that money. 
before you met Lee. Ooh, that's a big lie to keep from someone you got married to. You didn't tell her. Steve. And that's why Steve's always getting into fights and pointing out what's wrong with other people. Because he's keeping such a big lie and doing such a bad thing himself. So he's projecting onto other people to make himself feel better. And then we were trying and she was so upset it wasn't working. Oh, Steve. That's a terrible thing to do to someone. You see, we're all fucking crazy. Just tell me what a shitty husband I was. Go ahead. He's not going to do that. I'm just so sorry, son. I mean, this is beautiful. You did this by yourself. I thought it might cheer you Aww. up. He did a really good job. He's trying to be a fixer like his dad. What did he say? I'm, I just, I, I know you're taking a little vacation. I wanted to cheer you up. Oh, sweetie. I just need a little time away. It's nothing more than that, okay? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I love it. A little concerned with that mold underneath, though. Mom? Did you see something in the mirror? <laughs> <laughs> And then he filled up some cans, like five cans. Five cans, you say? Oh, he's going to burn down the house. <laughs> His face. We better get moving faster. I'm driving. No, 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 no. This is my He probably knows the roads better. And yeah, we gotta go. And five cans of gasoline. He's not going there to kill himself. He's going to burn the house down. Well, that's a relief. He's in more danger now than he's ever been. And if he tries to burn it, it will defend it will, itself. Yep. I really didn't hear a word I said. Yeah, I did. Now you're gonna listen to me. Yep. Let's go, Hugh. That house is the most dangerous place in the world for all of us, but especially for you. Because I read your book. I know you saw a ghost. You found the vanity in the game room. Mm -hmm. And you walked by the man repairing the clock, and then you saw your mother looking into the twins' rooms, the man repairing the clock. That's what I said. What he looked old timey. Antique clocks, you almost never have a repair record, so you have to learn how to read the witness marks. Witness marks tell the story of the piece, if you know how to read them. The clock hadn't been touched since the 60s. You hired a slew of workers toward the end. For that clock. No, he looked too old timey. Uh -huh. Yeah, you think you're, you're writing about your crazy mom, your crazy brother, making scary faces in the treehouse. You see the marks, but you don't know how to read them. Mm -hmm. I never built you kids a treehouse. <gasps> We were gonna be there maybe eight weeks. How would I even? Time to build a treehouse. Maybe he was already there. There was no, no treehouse. Tree house. Is that the red room? She was always asking where Luke was, and he was always saying he's in the treehouse. That house is the most dangerous place in the world for all of us, and that's why I told your sisters to stay put. You really think they will? I think they're on their way. Yep. <laughs> I'm not perfect, you know. Try again. Okay, good job, Cheryl. I was really drunk. Uh, and the lights went out. I mean, like I was um, in the dark. I couldn't see. You know what? Never mind. No, she's trying. Let her. Forget I asked. You just don't know what I'm dealing with. That other guy that Cheryl's always seeing, did she, like, experience Shirley's feelings towards that man? I touched Nell's body the night Ooh. before. What the fuck is wrong with you? I don't know. I guess I'm telling you. I don't I, I drew excuses. I'm not making you excuses. Bullshit. I saw <laughs> Why is Shirley taking that so okay? well? I see that, Shirley. Do you fucking believe that? Let's get back in the car. No, wait, let's not. You want to know why I did it? I touched now because I had to know. You know what happens when I touch people. A part of you knows it always has. Come on, Cheryl. And I felt nothing. And it spread, it spread everywhere in me, this nothing, until I couldn't feel anything anymore. And nothing worked. I couldn't feel anything. Surely, after I touched her skin, I couldn't feel. And I wondered if that's what she felt, and that's what mom feels, and it's just numb and nothing and alone. What if that's what it is for all of us? I didn't see him. I didn't see him. He was a light in the darkness. He was a, a life preserver in the ocean. I didn't, I didn't see him. I didn't see him. I didn't see him. And he stopped me, he stopped me. And then I saw him and then you walked in. There, I, was, I had to do it because it felt better than nothing. I'm so sorry. Please, just please. Oh God, we're here. Where's, wait, is this the Jeep with Luke in it? Oh, Luke. Wow, I have not seen him with this look 
before. Oh, the lights are on. Don't be inside the house, Luke. No, this is a man on a mission. He is not going to be swayed. It's not going to let him out. Those doors aren't going to open. Yep, nothing. We are in trouble. That's not mom. That was the girl from the picture Steve found in that vanity, right? Okay, so just like I thought, Luke was headed to the house. And this episode was all about getting the last two, the eldest two children, Stephen and Shirley, to finally admit to what they know has been true this whole time. In that flashback scene, I was, I mean, the guy that was fixing the clock looked way too old timey. He even looked a little gray. And I think because I'm always looking for ghosts, I just, it, it just stood out. And I loved that it came back in Steven's book when he was explaining to him like, no, you have seen ghosts. And then we find out there was no tree house. I remember it being odd and told myself to take a mental note because Olivia in one of the previous episodes was asking Steven, oh, where's your, I think it might've been episode one. She was like, where's your brother? And he goes, he's in the tree house. You're always asking where he is and he's always in the tree house there is no tree house. And it makes so much sense because why would he build them a tree house if they're only going to be there for a short period of time to flip the house? Shirley and Steve were tough ones to crack, but we got there in the end. Hugh finally got through to Steven talking about the ghosts, and I think Steven thinking back to that vanity and the incident with his mother punching the vanity and talking to the twins when they weren't there, I think he's beginning to accept that maybe his dad may be telling the truth. I mean, wouldn't it be nice if we weren't really crazy? And Theo finally getting through to Shirley. Shirley definitely seems like somebody that you need to be persistent with, and Theo is that person, and Theo knows she is that person. I also did like the reveal where Theo explains when she touched Nell's body, she didn't see anything. It was emptiness, it was darkness, and how that filled her up. How that's all she was feeling, that's why she was drinking, that's why the incident happened with Kevin in the supply closet, because she wasn't feeling anything, it was consuming her. Is that just what happens when she uses her ability on a corpse and she's never done that before or is that something that the house is doing it was trying to cause a little chaos luke seems to be in imminent danger but everyone's on their way now so i if we can't light this house on fire with gasoline what can we do what can we do to save luke at this point what is going to happen in two episodes i'm very excited because i feel like we're going to get i love this in movies and shows in books when you get towards the end and you've been getting bits and pieces to the puzzle but then you get like the grand villain monologue or you get you know that chapter where everything is explained to you and all the puzzle pieces that you have and you've been putting together it's laid out in front of you like a map and then you see everything and you're like oh my god that was there in front of me the whole time i know that's coming and i'm very excited and also for everything i'm sure there's a lot that hasn't been put in front of us we've gotten bits and pieces but we're going to get the whole story and i can't wait so I will see you in episode nine.